Now, all these golfers here have something in common and something not in common. What they have in common is they've all achieved the only effortless golf swing, and that is having a rotational downswing. Now, what all these golfers don't have in common is they're all completely different. We have normal everyday golfers. We have senior golfers, professionals, disabled golfers, all here. But you're probably thinking out there right now that a rotational golf swing is only for the athletically gifted. I couldn't be further from a truth. Remember, senior golfers, disabled golfers. Me, myself, I have personal experience with this. I have a rotational golf swing. I'm a disabled golfer. I have cerebral palsy, which severely affects your range of motion. So for me, I shouldn't be able to do this. That's why anyone can do it. So how you do this is through these five key pillars. This is what every one of those golfers did to be able to get this into the golf swing. This is the key to unlock that, because once these are in there, you will start rotating efficiently without even trying. You'll do it effortlessly too. So first one, club face being square. You have to have that club face square to be able to make this work. So club face square, let's talk about shaft parallel to the ground in the backswing. We want to have this club face here matching the angle of my back, my spine here. So we swing on a golf club on an arc around us. We need this club face to track that arc, which means matching my spine angle. So why that helps is because then I can continue to turn my body and I don't have to do any compensating moves to keep that club face square going through the golf ball. It'll be square prior to impact. It'll be square post impact. Don't have to manipulate it at all. If my club face is too open, I would have to slow down my body's rotation to flip through the golf ball to square up the club face, the old classic roll release. You can play with that, it's very timing based, but you will not rotate very well in a downswing, so it won't be effortless, because you have to put effort in to be able to hit the ball square. If your club face is closed to shut, let's say it's pointing dead straight down towards the ground, you would then have to stand the body up early extend to raise the hands to open up the club face. You won't be rotating, that won't be effortless, because you would have to stall that body movement, put effort in, realign the body to be able to hit the ball to your target. So second key pillar here is adequate amount of depth of the left arm and the hands at the top of the backswing. So that means at the top of the backswing, more depth means more behind, less depth means more on top with your body and a higher left arm. So we want an adequate amount. That means left arm more across the shoulder plane and having the hands, if let's say we drew a line here, is down towards my right heel area. This will prevent me from swinging on an overly out to in path with a good amount if I rotate well in the downswing. So if my hands are too high, with my left arm too high, and I turn in the downswing, the club gets thrown over the top, even in good sequencing, which we're gonna to get to. Because loads of you, when you try to rotate, you think this isn't good because I swing over the top all the time. That's because you're up at the top of the backswing like this. We want to get that left arm more across that shoulder plane and the hands will naturally be more back. We turn down the downswing, club falls on path, we'll be in a much better spot. So the third key pillar here is good sequencing in transition. So that's getting up to the top of the backswing and then starting our downswing with the lower body and mid torso. So rib cage and down, turning and rotating first, whilst the chest, the hands and the arms are staying passive at the top. That is again gonna help the club travel on a good path. It's gonna help you with the next pillar as well. And then that's gonna make you effortlessly turn through the golf ball and produce good golf shots. It won't result in some over curvature because if you rotate the chest at the same time as the lower body mid torso, clubs getting thrown over the top, you're gonna slice it again. So the fourth key pillar here is shallowing the golf club in transition in the downswing. So having the center of mass of the golf club start to pitch behind you as we turn down the downswing. This is massively gonna be helped by the last one because if you use your lower body mid torso, turn that first, upper body and arms be passive, the club is gonna shallow on its own. So effortlessly, it's going to shallow, of course. So why we want that is because when that club is shallowing, moving behind in that center of mass, we can continue to turn that body and that club is gonna fall onto the golf ball in ideal impact conditions. Now, if a golfer does the opposite, they have their shaft very vertical, very steep, and they continue to turn, you're gonna hit a horrendously slicey golf shot massively down on it. Your body won't do that. Your body would overcompensate by making an adjustment, and that normally would result in early extension to get the club to pitch more behind you, or you would excessively trail side bend 
to get the club to pitch more behind you to shallow out going for the golf ball. But then you're gonna have those hands and arms flip through. Again, you're gonna to have to put effort in to be able to do that, your body will, so it's not effortless. So we wanna have that club shaft shallowing in transition and that's gonna help you maintain everything as you go through the golf shot. So the fifth and final key pillar is tilting, keeping your tilt in the downswing. So that's keeping your lead side lower than your right. So this is gonna maintain, just like shallowing will, everything in the downswing. If I've got all those other keys beforehand, my club's moving on path, my club's shallowing, me keeping that tilt, keeping the left side down as I'm turning, is gonna maintain everything. That's the glue that keeps it together, is the tilt. Now, if I lose my tilt, this is so many of you do this, if you lift up that left side, maybe you're trying to bump the hips aggressively forward, that's gonna raise up that left side of the hip, and you're gonna see how my upper body is now tilting back as a reaction, the seesawing effect. That is going to, again, stall out your rotation. You're now not gonna be able to turn that efficiently. Can you still rotate from there? Yes, but your rate of that rotation will be slowing down. So that means these are gonna take over. If you lose that tilt, you'll be flipping with the hands. So we wanna keep that left side down, just like I'm showing here with this stick for the visual sense. Left side stays down and it turns around. That keeps everything moving nicely. Now you're in luck because every single one of those points I talked about, I have videos, multiple videos on every single one of these on my channel. And I also have a full course on how to get this into your golf swing on Skillist where there's a link down in the description to get that. So once we get these into our golf swing, that's the work we need to do. And you can see I didn't really talk about any rotation drills because ultimately if you have your golf swing in the right place, you will start to do it. So this is the key to getting that effortless golf swing just like all my students have here. So if you enjoyed this video, of course, click that like button if you want more golf instruction just like this. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video. So this is the only effortless golf swing. Take back control of your golf game by doing it.